What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we got the, the BX Finest, you know, Grammy Award winner, correct? No, Grammy nominated. I think like Grammy five, nominated. six times, yeah. I got Grammy robbed, like, at least four of those was, like, really highway robbery, but you're yeah. right. But you know how that goes. I think, in my mind, you got that nomination, you already won it to me. That's like, you know, like <laughs> being president or something. So we're going to say that. Bronx Finest, Fat Joe, appreciate you, my man, to tune in with us and join us with Community Voices. You know, a long line of talented and special guests, and glad to have you on that list. So as we wrap up, you know, Hispanic Heritage Month, I wanted you to come on here and talk about, you know, its importance and its impact, especially for you and your career and, like, your upbringing. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm with it. Yeah. So talk about, you know, me, I'm from Hunts Point, the South Bronx. You're from the South Bronx as well. You know, it's like you got to know Spanish. So talk to, talk to us about, you know, just growing up in the South Bronx. Why don't you talk to me about you growing up in Hunts Point and how your best friends next door were Spanish. Oh, yeah, absolutely. How you borrow sugar from each other, how you borrow <laughs> butter from each other, how you borrow eggs, how y'all went to church together. You went the first day to school together. Yep. And so what happens is this, believe it or not, um, there's other parts of the country where black and brown ain't really gel together like we did in the Bronx and in New York. Right. So when they see how Fat Joe uh, expresses himself or they see us like that, they like, damn, because they, they didn't have Spanish guys while they was growing up. Yeah. But you was fortunate enough to live in that diversity to where Chico and Pablo was your best friends. And, mm -hmm. And when you play pickup basketball games and football games, they was with you. You know what I'm saying? When you went to see Eddie Murphy Raw, they were sitting right next to you laughing at the movie theater and going crazy. Yeah. And so um, being Hispanic is a very prideful thing, man. Uh, being Latino is very, very prideful. Um, for some reason in our blood, we take it serious. Mm -hmm. So you, you would go to any project in New York City, and then you'll find the one Puerto Rican family with a flag hanging out the 16th <laughs> floor. Like, these guys yeah. are proud, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's something that was taught to me from uh, my parents and my family, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a beautiful thing being both, being, you know, Latino, but at the same time, Growing up in a in a predominantly black neighborhood, a ninety percent black neighborhood, it's like I got the best of both worlds. Absolutely, yeah. I remember even like during the block parties and getting like all the Spanish food, and even just like getting that culture because my family's Jamaican. But then it's like when you're surrounded by different, uh, different Spanish people, then you're kind of absorbing that culture as well. It's just like the same way you were around more like you know black families and stuff like that, and then you take it in that culture and it's just. Well, if you go back, to, if you go back to Jamaica, <clears throat> Puerto Rico, Cuba, Santo Domingo, Bahamas, we all just had different colonizers. It's yeah. the same thing. Brothers and sisters, you know, we just had, you know, UK took Jamaica. Yo, your your phone is off the hook. Like, I just don't get it. Like, oh, um, like, yo, well, I've never seen a guy with more <laughs> happy, with more, uh, what you call that, uh, um, what's those things? Uh, no, no, what you in with all with 15 guys group chats in my group life? Chats. You know, I've never seen a guy so crazy. He got football or us, this one, or, like <laughs> so it goes on. Um, but the fact is, if you go back to the roots, the roots of the Caribbean, it was just different colonizers. So, look at uh, Dominican and Haiti, Haiti was colonized by the French. Mm -hmm. Dominican by the Spanish. That's why they speak Spanish and they speak French. But you can't tell me they're different people. They they on the same island. Yeah, for sure. So I look at it, man. Yeah. You know, and, and talk about, you know, I, feel, I really like this one. Just like the impact of, you know, Spanish music and your career and just like mm -hmm. when you create your own music. Now, that's different. Now, Spanish music. <clears throat> Salsa music might be the most beautiful music in the world, mm -hmm. right? When, you know, people who don't even speak Spanish love the beats, love the rhythm, love everything about it. But if you speak Spanish and you understand what 
Hector Lavoe is singing the Gran Combo, Celia Cruz. I mean, man, they put it down. That music is so beautiful. The bands, the instruments, uh, that's another like cultural thing. You know, when you hear that, you just like, wow. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and uh, salsa music to me is the most beautiful music in the world the, to me personally. Right. And even for me, like you said, like, I don't really know Spanish fluently enough to be like indictment or something, understanding what they say. Well, saying. you knew that when this Spanish record came on, them J-Lo started <laughs> oh, yeah. turning up and you was like, oh, I like that Spanish <laughs> right, record. Right, right. <laughs> when you see them little J-Lo's turning up, you was like, mm -hmm. hold up. <laughs> something about this record, right. you know, and, uh, and, and it just, uh, it's another pride, you know, Latinos, Hisp Hispanics, they just very prideful, man. Right. And, and they, you know, they feel so so proud about their music and their roots and their culture that uh there's nothing like it. You know, our food, you know, so the difference about the Hispanics is that, you know, you could be African American and 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 that's what we call black. And then you could be Hispanic, but you could be from Panama, you could be from right. Guatemala, you could be from Honduras, you can be from Mexico, you could be okay. from Colombia, you could be from, and it won't stop. And so everybody got their own little culture to them, their own way of cooking, their own way of talking, their own slang, you know. And so everybody, uh, we try in America is all about inclusion and everybody being together. So we try to bubble it up. But the truth is, everybody got their own little niche their own little thing they bring into the table right. so that, that that's what's so crazy about latinos you can look at a latino and be like yo he's latino but you really don't know if he's from chile yeah if he's from venezuela if he's from puerto rico you know it's just so many um hispanic countries absolutely and then last question for you. so the world knows you're like a amazing storyteller right so what's the story you're gonna share with us today whether it's like you know you with your team making music or just like you in another country or anything that you feel is like noteworthy of telling like a funny story or something that was, you know, impactful. I can tell you a funny story. I'm out in Spain just to keep it Latino. Absolutely. I'm out in Spain. I'm doing a show. And then Tony Touch, DJ Tony Touch shows up to the show in Spain. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, Tony, you know, we on another uh, another continent. Yeah. Tony, he's like, yo, come with me. I want you to follow me, this and this and that. And uh, and so I follow him and he pulls up into like a building. I don't want to, I don't want to say it's projects because I don't know what projects looks like out there, yeah. but it's a building. All I know is I walk into an apartment and he got a whole studio set up mm -hmm. and, he, and, and he's making a mixtape, a Tony Touch 50 <laughs> MCs mixtape. And he's like, yo. I need you to rap on this beat, right? I'm like, damn, Tone, we all the way in Spain <laughs> and you still getting me for verses? Like, I'm like, yo, this is crazy, man. Can't escape him. <laughs> oh, man, yo, them Latinos, they hustle, don't stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing that's so beautiful in that, and that's what I get, shout out my father, he's Cuban, Um, was being an entrepreneur. So my father was a baker. Yeah. Uh, for 13 years. He damn near thought he was the logo of the bakery. He argued with the manager. He got fired. Mm -hmm. So around Christmas time, my father got maybe $1,500, $2,000 saved up to his name. And uh, that's the Vatos, that's the Vatos Loco. Uh, what, what what we call that? Group group chat? That's the, there's another <laughs> one. There's the Vatos Loco, all right? So, uh, so my father goes with me to 23rd Street and Broadway and we and we bought a bunch of toys yeah. Christmas time, like invested in toys, cop motorcycles, baseball gloves, bats, footballs. And then we went up to 158 from Broadway. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's where I learned how to be an entrepreneur. So if we bought a motorcycle for five dollars, we, we sold it for eight dollars, ten dollars. And that's where I learned how to hustle. That's why I opened my sneaker store right there, at 158 in Broadway, because that's where I learned how to be an entrepreneur. Right. So when you see these people, they come from here. An American dream is to come over here and make it. And so when you see those ladies, 
It could be 100 degrees and they selling mangoes and oranges on the highway. Yep. The waters, they on their grind. And if you let them, if the cops don't mess with them like they did last week, they took that lady's whole produce and threw it in the garbage for no reason. Crazy. But, and so you got to understand, they start selling fish on the side of the highway. Next thing you know, they rent the place. <laughs> And then now they got a fish market. They mm -hmm. selling fruits on the side of the highway. Then they go and get a juice bar, fruit market. Um, and so, you know, I respect the Latinos and their, their entrepreneurialism and how they get on a grind. They get on a grind. Ain't nothing you can do. I'm here in the ATL right now. I went to two restaurants. Yeah, I've been coming to ATL where there was no Spanish people. Mm -hmm. Not even working here. Not in existence. Right. But now I come and I went to the restaurants and, you know, you got Latinos saying like, yo, Fat Joe, what's up? And they and they working here, they on a grind and they're like, yo, we out here working. And, you know, I used to live in New York. and have a little, little apartment and it was expensive. Now I'm out here in the ATL. I got a big apartment. But, right. you know, I just love that that they work hard, man. And they they, they, they work hard and they entrepreneurs. Yeah, they see the, the bigger picture, like, you know, whether they're on the sidewalk, on the streets, selling what they got to sell. And, and, that, and, 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 and that's where I get a little mad at us who've been yeah. here a long time. Mm -hmm. and we live here and other people look at this country like it's the land of the opportunity. We got African brothers and sisters like if you let me in America, I'm going to go turn up. Right. and own a, a car dealership mm -hmm. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So we have to uh, look at this place as the land of opportunity. Of course, it's flawed. Everything ain't perfect. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out here to make it. Absolutely. And then, cool. That's a wrap. I know you got a dinner after this. All right, my brother, man. Thank yeah, you, so thank you so much. So much.